Good morning. Welcome to Blessed Sacrament Church and welcome to our liturgy. Today we are celebrating the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Before we begin, we ask that you please turn off your cell phone or put them on a silent mode. Let us all stand and give greetings to one another. Peace prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there's hatred, let me sow love. Where there's injury, pardon. Where there's doubt, faith. Where there's despair, hope. Where there's darkness, light. Where there's sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Our presider for this Mass is Father Ike. And our gathering song is One Heart. the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My sisters and brothers, we are gathered, one heart, one mind, one body in Christ. It's a beautiful moment of our encounter with the living Lord. And so as we prepare to celebrate this sacred mystery 
of his presence among us, we call to mind our own sins. We call to mind sometimes our doubt, our living in this mode of scarcity and division. And we ask for the Lord's healing mercy. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Christ eleison, Christ eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of O oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. 
Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Be seated now and hear the word of God. A reading from the second book of Kings. A man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing to Elisha, the man of God, 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. Elisha said, give it to the people to eat. But his servant objected. How can I set this before a hundred people? Elisha insisted, give it to the people to eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and there shall be some left over. And when they had eaten, there was some left over as the Lord had said. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. in all his ways and holy in all his deeds the lord is close to all who call him who call on him in through A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I, a prisoner of for the Lord, urge you to live in a manner worthy of the call you have received, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, 
bearing with one another through love, striving to preserve the unity of the spirit to the bond of peace, one body and one spirit. As you are also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father for all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Well, Jesus went across the Sea of Galilee. A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. The Jewish feast of Passover was near. When Jesus raised his eyes and saw that a large crowd was coming to him, he said to Philip, where can we buy enough food for them to eat? He said this to test him because he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, 200 days wages worth of food would not be enough for each of them to have a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what good are these for so many? Jesus said, have the people recline. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place. So the men reclined, about 5,000 in number. Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed them to those who were reclining, and also as much of the fish as they wanted. When they had had their fill, he said to his disciples, gather the fragments left over so that nothing will be wasted. So they collected them and filled 12 wicker baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves that, they, that had been more than they could eat. When the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet the one who is to come into the world. Since Jesus knew that they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's really a great joy to, uh, 
to see us gathered together here and also for those who, who might still be streaming. Hmm? Um, signs, signs. Signs point us to something more, often to a particular destination. It would be strange if while you were driving, you saw a sign, Santa Barbara, 20 miles, in big letters, and you suddenly parked by the sign and started offloading your luggage to camp right there. Or if someone was pointing to the moon and we remain fixated on their finger instead of looking at the moon. Signs reveal and point beyond themselves to something more. And the Gospel of John, from which we heard today, is often called the Book of Signs. Every sign Jesus does is meant to reveal who he is. John tells us at the very beginning, the word of God made flesh. The light of the world. The only begotten son of the father. That we might believe in him. And sometimes we can get caught up in the signs and miss what it is pointing to. Or as St. Ignatius says, get caught up in the gifts and miss the giver of the gifts. And in the Gospel of John, it's all about how we respond to these signs. And if they lead us to total trust, dependence, and belief, in him. So just as a background, the chapter before our gospel today, Jesus healed a man crippled for 38 years by the pool of Siloam. And after the sign, it's curious, the words, first words he said, my father is still working and I also I'm working. And what was the response? They wanted to kill him. Not only because he cured on a Sabbath, but because he made himself equal to God. That was that response. In today's gospel of the feeding of the 5,000, we hear... A large crowd followed him because they saw the signs he was performing on the sick. And right after the feeding of the 5,000, when the people saw the sign he had done, they said, this is truly the prophet, the one who is to come into the world. And then something curious follows since Jesus knew they were going to come and carry him off to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain alone. And we might wonder, why? Why does he withdraw? I think he answers a bit later in this gospel. Truly, truly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw signs, but because you ate some of the loaves and were filled. They follow because they were filled. So there's an underlying question in the gospel and one that confronts us today as well. Why do you follow Jesus? Why are you here today? around this table. And we need to examine our hearts as we read the gospel because 
Many follow him in the gospel and have no faith in him. Some follow and have partial faith, a faith that's just based on the signs and the gifts alone. I'll follow you as long as you fill my belly. But in a little bit when he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life in you. I'm out of here. I'm gone. It's a partial faith. Some also have true faith and belief that's rooted in his person, in him. So I think faith in Jesus is an invitation into a new dimension of being. It's an invitation to operate and work the Father's work on earth. It's really to become agents of the Father's goodness, love, provision, and mercy on earth, just like Jesus. Notice that the gospel says Jesus knew what he was going to do when he asked the disciples, where can we get enough food for them to eat? He knew. We operate so much in a dimension of scarcity and division. It's marked by the words, I am not enough. We do not have enough. It is impossible to meet the need. It's also marked by greed, grasping for oneself, and indifference. Go away and fend for yourself. Jesus, faith, is trying to awaken us to a different kind of being and seeing. Where we put what we have into the hands of the Lord with a heart filled with thanksgiving. And we let ourselves be blessed, broken, and given in God's service to a broken and hungry world. This is the calling of our faith. Hmm? We are invited to a new way of being and seeing. Paul describes it, there is one God and Father of all. Which means that in the body of Christ, we are called to overcome the divisions, the hatred, the resentments, because God is over all. God is through all. God is in all, as the second reading says. So imagine if every day we woke up believing and saying, God is over me. God is through me. And God is in me. And what if for everyone we met, we also thought the same thing? God is over them. God is through them. And God is in them. That's one of the ways we're invited to a new way of seeing, to walk by faith, not by sight. To walk not in the scarcity and division, but in the abundance of God and in unity. If, if we can believe and see in Jesus God at work in human flesh, God working among us. We realize what our calling is. It's not simply to receive the gifts of God, but to become one with the giver. To entrust our lives in all humility 
into his hands so that with thanksgiving we may be blessed, broken, and poured out to accomplish the work of the Father in the world. He wants us to become a living sign just like Jesus. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified on the Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The hand of the Lord feeds us. Indeed, he answers all our needs. And so we bring our prayers today before the throne of grace. For Pope Francis, our bishops, and all leaders of the church, as they continue to feed God's holy people with the word of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, na for nations to work together in ensuring that no one will ever go hungry again, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of faith to deepen our appreciation for the Eucharist as true nourishment for our faith and for the welcome return of all those who have stayed away from church because of the pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For plentiful rain to grow the crops that feed our nation and the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and infirm of our community, for those who suffer from COVID-19, for our recently deceased, Josefina Madrid, and for those who have died of COVID-19 for the petitions in our book and box of intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Erasmo, Avellana, Jonas del Rosario, and Dorina Serral. Let us now pray in silence for our own personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Generous God, your son Jesus fed the multitude, and you continue to meet our needs every day. Hear these our prayers and grant them through Jesus Christ, 
our Lord. Amen. Please remain standing. As we prepare to share God's gift, let us say the generosity prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Lord, teach, teach me, me to, to be generous. generous. Teach, teach me, me to serve, serve you as you deserve. deserve. To, to give and not to count the cost. cost. To fight and not to heed the wounds. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labor and not to ask for reward. Save that of knowing that I do your will. Please be seated. Please take a moment to prepare your offering as stewards of our church. God loves a cheerful giver. Ushers, please come forward and receive our offering.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. At this Mass, we especially remember and pray for the repose of Dorina Serrao. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostle, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord.
the incredible gift we receive in the Eucharist is to be made one with the giver of life. Hmm? What a tremendous blessing. God's desire has always been to be one in us and with us and through us. We can really say, God is over me, God is through me, God is in me. Let's pray. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. So be seated. We have some announcements. Good afternoon. Have you registered to participate in our St. Ignatius Feast Day activities for this Saturday, July 31st, beginning at 9.45 a.m.? Do not miss the grace of participating in this day of reflection and sharing at the table of the Eucharist, as well as lunch on this 500th anniversary of Ignatius' cannonball moment that led to his conversion. Call the parish office, register through Eventbrite, or text Jesuit to 84576. Again, text J-E-S-U-I-T to the number 84576. See bulletin for details. Thank you. Classes for the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults in person will begin on, on September 12 at 9 a.m. If you are interested in receiving the sacraments of baptism, First Communion, or Confirmation, Father JT will be directing RCIA in English this coming year. Please contact the front office for an initial meeting with Father JT. There will be representatives of our religious education team outside after Mass to answer any questions you have about preparing and registering children, youth, and adults for the sacraments of baptism, Eucharist, and confirmation. We are happy to accompany you on your journey of faith Please stop by the tables outside for more information. Please see the bulletin for our Mass times. We hope to begin our Sunday 5.30 p.m. on August 1st and the Saturday evening Mass on August 7. And lastly, we have a request from our food pantry ministry. They are requesting volunteers on Saturday from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. All are welcome. Thank you. And have a blessed week. The Lord be with you. We pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you in his kindness and pour out saving wisdom upon you. And the church says, Amen. Amen. May he nourish you always with the teachings of the faith and make you persevere in holy deeds. And the church says, Amen. Amen. May he turn your steps toward himself and show you the path of charity and peace. And the church says, Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. The church says, Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. We go forth in the peace of Christ. Thank you and have a wonderful weekend.